Uh, one of the most famous uh, example of Japanese monkeys, the study of Japanese monkeys, is sweet potato washing in Koshima. Koshima is a small island offshore of Miyazaki Prefecture. I want to show the video clip of sweet potato washing. Uh, two monkeys have the sweet potato. Rubbing, 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 and put into the water. And to eat. Originally, it started to wipe out the sandy, uh, muddy things from the sweet potato in the fresh water. But generation by generation, when it spread into the troop of the monkeys, the behavior changed <coughs> from fresh water to the sea, maybe to take the salty taste. And a lot of interesting things I have to mention uh, but anyway, uh, this is called culture, animal culture. Well, our predecessors, our professors like Kinji Imanishi and his students called it proto-culture, uh, not really culture, uh, because it's not really the same as to human culture. But anyway, in Koshima monkeys, they have found very interesting three aspects of culture. Emergence, transmission, and modification. Emergence, transmission, modification these are the three important aspects of culture. When we label a behavior as cultural behavior, at least three things is necessary, at least. Who originated? Why it started? And how it spreads into the community? And generation by generation, the culture must be changed. It's not the exact copy of the same thing. So in the case of Koshima monkeys, the evidence provides the three aspects of culture. We know it is Emo, a female named Emo, a year and a half old female, started this behavior in the summer of 1953. So we witnessed, the primatologist witnessed how it happened. The transmission is due to two channels. One is kin relationship, another is playmates. So emos mother and siblings started to wash potatoes. The second is playmates, a year older, the same age, or a year younger. So those youngsters started to wash potatoes. I talked about emergence and transmission. Modification is Washing potatoes started from fresh water in a small stream. But during the course of transmission from one generation to the next, this behavior moved onto the seashore. It's not so far, 
it's only 30, 40 meters only. But started from the fresh water and moved to the, the ocean, to the sea. And as I have described, it must be the taste of salt. Another famous example of Japanese monkeys' behavior is hot spring bathing in Shiga Heights. So monkeys in the hot spring and covered with the snow. But the important point I want to tell you is hot spring bathing in Shiga Heights, not all over Japan. So this behavior is limited in Shiga Heights only. Actually, no other place. There are many, many, many Japanese uh, monkeys site, but only one site. The same story about sweet potato washing. It is limited in Koshima Island, not the other place. Rubbing things, it's everywhere in Japanese monkeys. Japanese monkeys love to, uh, how do I call in English? I don't know. How do I do? How do I say? Rubbing. Rubbing. Is it OK? Rubbing against to the solid surface. Is this, is this also rubbing? Mm. So this is uh, very common or universal behavior repertoire of Japanese monkeys. But sweet potato washing or rubbing is unique in Koshima, partly because of provisioning. Sweet potato is not the natural one. That is, human experimenter gave the potato to the monkeys. And hot spring, of course, there are many, many hot spring in Japan, but hot spring and monkeys are necessary. And that is very really limited. And actually, this is only one place. So hot spring is there so that monkeys jumped into the hot spring. Again, like rubbing behavior, swimming in the water or getting into the water is um, general behavior repertoire of Japanese monkeys. But hot spring bathing is limited in Shiga Heights. Now you may understand my point. It is called animal culture. But the important things, two important things. Yes, fundamental part of the behavior is universal in Japanese monkeys, like rubbing or getting into the water. But this specific behavior needs environmental support or in other words, there are environmental constraints. Suppose that no sweet potatoes, no sweet potato washing. Suppose that no hot spring, no hot spring bathing. I gave you the two famous examples, but now I will give you not so famous Example, extra large cluster in Shodoshima. Even me, the expert of primatologist, I was so surprised to see this kind of extra large cluster. In Japanese, it is called sarudango. And this kind of extra-large cluster is in Shodoshima only. 
But again, the same story. Uh, universal general behavior repertoire of Japanese monkeys huddling together. Huddling is a light word. Huddling together, especially in the night, to protect, maybe protecting from the cold. So they huddling together. But maybe only two or three. So this is very unique situation. And we suspect this is partly due to the provisioning again. They have nothing to do except huddling because the foods are always available. They do not have to range the place to feed. They are just waiting for the time of provisioning. That maximizes the opportunity of getting food. To get food in the wild, it's better to forage in the forest. But in the provisioning area, it's better not to forage, but to wait. In the waiting period, it's better to huddling together to keep warm. And the final example of Japanese monkey is from Yakushima. Yakushima monkeys, that is subspecies. Makaka fuscata fuscata is Japanese monkey, but, but makaka fuscata yakui is the name of this monkey. So subspecies, very close, the same species, but are different a little different from Honshu, Shikoku Kyushu area, yeah? And in Yakushima, it's a World Natural Heritage Site. Yakushika, so shika deer. Monkeys, shika deer. So both peacefully coexist in the island. Or even more, shika deer is moving with monkeys. Why? Shika deer wants to eat the fruits dropped by the monkeys. So shika deer already eaten up all the forest floor. That is the problem in Yaku, Yakushima Island. Shika deer, the number is growing up and eat a lot. And in my understanding, more and more shika deer uh, co-moving with monkeys. And we believe the reason is monkeys drop, that is their nature again. When they eat, they drop a lot, fruits and leaves, and that is eaten by the shika deer. Okay? Monkey, shika deer, so that riding on the shika deer Grooming shika deer and riding on the back. And it did not happen right from the beginning like 1950s. We have more than 50 years, 60 years observation of Yakushima monkeys, but we believe this behavior started relatively recently, a decade, two decades ago, partly because of the change of the forest, change of the behavior of monkeys. Again, grooming 
is natural universal uh, behavior of monkeys. Monkey want to groom to the monkeys, but that was extended to shikadia. That cohabit, living together in the same area. So they started to groom and to ride. The first monkey who was witness to ride on the shikadia is nicknamed Rodeo. <laughs> Rodeo, the person riding on the bull. No, I don't think so. Now it's uh, prevailing to the community. So scientifically, it's very clear. We do not know who originated. It's not the case like Emo in Koshima Island. But who was first witnessed was Rodeo, young male juvenile. So we don't know who originated. It could be Rodeo, the young male juvenile. I meant whether there is something like special bonds between a, in a particular monkey and a particular deer that they would always go together. Mm. The shortest answer is, no, we don't know. There is no published article about this behavior. It's so strange for chimpanzee researcher. Why you do not focus on this special topic? It's so interesting. But actually, there is no well-written, published paper about this behavior. There are a couple of reasons, but we don't know. And I really appreciate that question. We should know, are there any special combination of particular monkey and particular shika deer? Or how about the sex difference? How about the developmental change? How to acquire this skill? Suppose that you label this is very unique animal culture in Japanese monkey in Yakushima Island. We want to know emergence, transmission, and modification. But unfortunately, at the moment, we don't know. And I'm not the right, right person to give you the details.